Which calendar is the most accurate calendar? The Essene calendar? The standard Jewish calendar? The Gregorian calendar? Should we be using a lunar calendar or a solar calendar? Which calendar is the most accurate for determining the feast days? Which calendar is God using? Stay tuned for an insightful introduction to the subject, the fascinating subject of calendars. Hi there, I'm Lee Brainerd. Welcome to Sooth Keep and another edition of Prophecy in the Crucible. My mission is truth. Truth at any cost. Truth above every other consideration. Now, in the past couple years, and even to a greater degree the past few months, I've received a lot of letters asking about the Essene calendar, asking about the Jewish calendar, asking about the Gregorian calendar, asking questions about the calendar in general. Which calendar should we be using? Which one is the best calendar? Which one is the most accurate calendar? And of course, people have their favorites. Some favor the Essene calendar. Some favor the Jewish calendar. Some favor the Gregorian calendar. But this whole debate over which calendar is best typically goes forwards lacking some absolutely necessary background context. And today I'm going to try and put the calendar question in its proper context. The first thing I want to point out is that all of the original calendars were 360 day calendars. If you, all the calendars basically from 700 BC and earlier were 360 days. It doesn't matter if you look at the Babylonian calendars, the Sumerian calendars, the Chinese calendars, the Korean calendars, the Northern European calendars, the Pacific Island calendars, the Mayan calendars. It does not matter where you look. You find 360 day calendars. This is universal around the world. Now, in this original 360 day calendar, the lunar year and the solar year were exactly harmonious. There were exactly 12 lunar months of exactly 30 days in each solar year that was exactly 360 days long. So there was no problem between the solar year and the, the lunar year. They were in perfect harmony. Now, Approximately 700 BC, there was a tremendous cosmic event seen around the world, which lengthened the year to 365 and a quarter days, and which shortened the month, the lunar month, to 29 and a half days. This happened around the era of the founding of the Roman Empire, who worshipped Mars, the god of war. And this is the era of the temple cracking and the sundial going back that we read about in the book of Isaiah. Now, mythologies around the world tell of a battle in the heavens witnessed by millions of people. A battle between two gods. And when the dust settled from this battle, the year was lengthened and the month was shortened. You find these legends all across North America, South America, Africa, Asia, and Europe. Now, I need to point out here that in these ancient records, these mythologies, and these legends, this is tail-wrapped history. In other words, it's a core of history that's wrapped in a storytelling mode. They're talking about the gods that they saw in the heavens. They, you have to bear in mind that these ancient cultures worshipped the five visible planets, the sun and the moon, the 12 constellations, or the 12 zodiac signs, and then they worshipped other important asterisms or other important constellation patterns. These were their gods. This was their pantheon. This was universal around the world. And the fact that uh, they worship the five visible planets and the sun and the moon is why so many of the pantheons had seven gods uh, at the core of the pantheon. Sometimes they had eight if they included Mother Earth. Now, 
Solon received the equivalent of a Nobel Prize for calculating the length of the year at 365 and a quarter days. Now, of course, revisionist history looks at Solon's efforts and they say, well, see, these people were so brain dead, they were so backward that they thought the year was 360 days when it was actually 365 and a quarter days. This is not the case, folks. The year actually was 360 days. And cultures around the world saw something happen in the heavens, something catastrophic that lengthened the year and shortened the month. And we live with the results of this now. Every culture around the globe scrambled to fix the broken calendar. They scrambled to fix it so that the, uh, the equinoxes and uh, the solstices and their feast days came out on the right days. This is why we see Stonehenge type constructions just exploding around the world on all the continents around this era. They were trying to adjust their calendars. Now, the second point is no existing calendar today can lay legitimate claim to being the original calendar. The Essene folks like to claim that their calendar is the original one that goes all the way back to the garden. The folks that prefer the Jewish calendar uh, like to prefer their calendar as the one that goes all the way back to the garden. Those that follow the uh, Gregorian calendar, which is based on the Julian calendar, like to trace this one all the way back, but none of these claims are true. Everybody had a 360-day calendar around 700 BC and earlier, and all the calendars we have now are calendars that arose trying to make sense out of the chaos, that trying to make a damaged calendar still workable, trying to come up with a rational way to make their damaged calendar workable. They're in a system now where the solar year is off, the lunar year is off, the lunar month is off, maybe even the length of the solar day is off. We're trying to make sense out of chaos. Now, some pursued the most common way to fix this calendar was to add five days to the end of the year. So you'd start with your normal 360-day calendar year, which everybody had the solar year. You'd add the five days to the end. And that worked out pretty good until you figured out that it was still off a little bit. And every four years, you had to add an extra day, a leap year. And that worked pretty good until we figured out that every century, we still need to add one extra day yet. At any rate, you're balancing something, you're harmonizing something that's broken. Now, the third thing that we need to look at is the question of which calendar is most accurate and why is it regarded as most accurate? Well, one thing I want to point off, what are we talking about when we're talking about most accurate? If we're talking about most accurate in the sense of how far off does it get every year, then the Jewish calendar is the least accurate because it gets off about a month before it gets corrected back with an intercalated month. Now, what I mean by intercalated month is uh, seven times in every 19 years, they add an extra 30-day month to their calendar. And they just do this so that this has the feast days floating back and forth, sometimes earlier, sometimes later. Now, the Essene calendar gets up to one week off. So it's more accurate in the sense that it doesn't get as far off from the solar year. So... Every five or six years, they're going to add an extra seven-day week to their calendar that maintains their seven-day uh, pattern that they're using in their calendar, and that harmonizes the calendar. But the calendar that is the most accurate in this regard that gets the least off is the Gregorian calendar because it's only off a quarter of a day per year. It gets off to a maximum of one day, and then it has a leap year to catch back up. So the Essene calendar can get off one and a half days a year. The Gregorian calendar gets off about oh, a quarter of a day per year, and the Jewish calendar is going to get off six, seven, eight days in a year, depending upon where it's at in its rotation cycle. Now, let's take a closer look at the Essene calendar. 
Contrary to popular opinion that has been pushed in some books, the Essene calendar is not a lunar calendar. It's simply a modified solar calendar. There's 12 months of 30 days each in this calendar. Now, this is not a lunar month. 30 days, folks, is not a lunar month. It's an artificial month that quickly departs over time from the actual lunar month. If you're going to have a true lunar calendar, you need to alternate between 29-day months and 30-day months because the length of the month, the lunar month, is about 29.5 days. Now, that's not exact, but it's close enough for what we're talking about. So, in, in like in the Jewish calendar, the months are going to alternate between 30 days and 29. They're going to bounce back and forth. And this is why they have 354 days in the lunar year calendar or a lunar solar calendar rather than um, the regular 360 days that was the historic calendar. Now, in the Essene calendar, I mentioned they start with the base of a 360-day year, 12 months of exactly 30 days. After every three-month period, they add one day. So they add four days to the year that comes up with 364 days. And then to, to catch up to the fact that the solar year is 365 and a quarter days, they add an extra week every five or six years. It's a pretty accurate way of doing things. Now, I want to point out that this isn't more accurate than the Gregorian calendar. And it's not more spiritual either than the Gregorian calendar. I want you to notice that they've added the days into the calendar. With all the days that used to get put at the end of the year, they'd put five days or four days at the end of the year. They put these days during the year. So the Essene calendar is doing essentially the same thing that the Gregorian calendar is, uh, that the Julian calendar, pardon me, did when Julius Caesar took the, the days that are the five days at the end of the year and he just stuck them into different months. And so that's why we have some months with 31 days. So this is very similar then, the Essene calendar is very similar then to, in this regard, to the Julian calendar. Now the one advantage or apparent advantage or supposed advantage of the Essene calendar is that it has the feast days are landing on the exact same day every, uh, the same day of the week every year. And this was deemed important to them. They've set their calendar up so that in any given year, there's 52 weeks of exactly seven days and that comes out to 364. And then they just recycle through that over and over again. But I want to point out that this is problematic on two levels. First of all, this is only superficially an improvement. The, the, the actual day is still drifting back and forth on the, in the solar year. It, um, you, you're not keeping it on the same day in the solar year. You're only keeping it on the same weekday on your um, calendar year. That, that's all you're doing. And, and this is a pragmatic advantage if you want to have the feasts land on the same day of the week every year. But this isn't more accurate. I want to also point out that God never intended to have a calendar set up for men to follow that the feast days would always land on the same day of the week. This was an innovation by the Essenes. I'm not going to judge their motives for doing it, but I'm just saying it's an innovation and it's incorrect. The original 360 day calendar of 12 months, exactly 30 days. When you cycle through this, the feast days do not cycle onto the same day of the week, year after year. They cycle through the days of the week. This is the original calendar. This is the original pattern. The, the regular Jewish calendar, even though it's got its own idiosyncrasies, at least maintains this point. And so does the Gregorian calendar. The Essene calendar is the one that breaks this point. 
Now let's look at the Jewish calendar. The, the Jewish calendar is, it follows what they call the lunisolar year, where you're trying to harmonize uh, the lunar year and the solar year. So when you're doing the lunar solar calendar, you're, you're going to have a 354 day, on average, year. And you get that because half the months are 30 days and half the months are 29 days. That comes out to 354 days. And you have to do this if you're trying to follow the lunar year uh, and follow the lunar month because the lunar month is tw approximately 29.5 days long. But 12 lunar months come short of the historical 360-day solar year, and it comes even shorter of the current 365 and a quarter day solar year. So what they have to do to catch things back up, because at a 354-day year, you just keep falling behind and farther behind and farther behind from the 365 and a quarter day year. So um, you're going to add a 30-day leap month to the Jewish calendar seven times in a 19-year cycle. And if you want to know the details of that, you can go to any of a number of websites which will give you the, the calendar cycle. It'll tell you which years it's going to happen on the 19-year cycle. Now, the Jewish calendar is definitely much more complicated than the Essene calendar and insanely more complicated than the Gregorian calendar. Now, let's take a brief look at the Gregorian calendar. The Gregorian calendar is just a straightforward, unashamed solar calendar. And there's a legitimate reason for this. Folks, the year is a solar year. A year is 365 and a quarter days with a little change. Now, historically, it was 360 days, and we are going to be getting back to that, I believe, in the kingdom. But in the meantime, we're dealing with the solar year and a lunar month. And our solar year is longer than it used to be, and the lunar month is shorter than it used to be, and so we've got problems. Now, we get the word month from the word moon. A month is a month. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Now, anciently, there were 12 lunar months that were exactly 30 days long each, and the lunar year exactly corresponded to the solar year. It was not one second off. Our amazing creator designed a year in a lunar month that were in perfect harmony. Now, they weren't even one second off. But now, in the current situation we're in, ever since about 700 B.C., the solar year is longer, the lunar month is shorter, and these things are at hopeless odds. It, everybody that has come up with the calendar has come up with the calendar that has to keep adjusting back to the correct solar year length or the actual contemporary solar year length because no matter what they do for the calendar, it's going to be off. The calendar is broken. And there's no easy way to harmonize the, the lunar month and the lunar year with the solar year. There's no convenient or easy way to do this. The Essenes made a noble attempt. It had strength in some areas and weakness in others. The standard Jewish calendar is a noble attempt. It has strength in some areas and weakness in others. Uh, the Gregorian calendar is, in my estimation, the most accurate of the calendars, but it has its own imperfections. The reality is, folks, we are dealing with a difficult situation. We're dealing with the effects of the curse, and we struggled to, to overcome the effects of the curse. Now, this brings up the, the interesting situation on which calendar is God using? Well, in my mind, we need to ask another question first. We need to ask, what are we talking about? What's he using it for? Um, there is only one way to count years. The only way to count years is with the solar year. Every calendar on the planet, even the Essene calendar and the Jewish calendar, they have to keep correcting back to the solar year. 
That's because the methods that they're using for making a calendar are off from the solar year. And the more that you're off from the solar year, the more that frequently that you have to correct or the bigger pieces that you have to correct. If you're using the Essene calendar, every five or six years, you've got to correct a whole week. If you're using the Jewish calendar, you're going to be correcting a 30-day chunk seven times every 19 years. If you're using the Gregorian calendar, you correct one day every four years and an extra day every century. That's, that's a lot more accurate in my estimation. But now if you're using it for other things, if you're using it for calculating feasts, you might find that the Jewish calendar is going to work better for some things. Um, like I said, no calendar is, is, is going to satisfactorily resolve every problem that a calendar ought to be able to satisfactorily resolve because we're dealing with a broken calendar based on a broken solar system. Now, personally, I think that God is using the solar calendar, in other words, the current Gregorian calendar, for everything that depends on the solar year. I wouldn't be surprised if he's using the Jewish calendar for certain things, uh, like feast day calculations. I wouldn't be surprised if he uses the Essene calendar for some things. He's In his dealings with man, he's dealing with them in their circumstances, and he's dealing with them where they are at. So, in a nutshell, then, we've looked at all these different calendars. Uh, if you're just simply talking of accuracy in the simple sense of that this particular feast or celebration is going to be celebrated uh, as close to exactly a year later as possible, then, then the Gregorian solar calendar is the best way to do it. You're gonna, that day is going to be celebrated if you're using the Gregorian calendar within a day or two of where it is last year, it's going to be that close year after year. It's not going to drift up to a week away like the Essene calendar does, or maybe a little more. And it's because of the intercalated days, and it's not going to drift up to a month or so off like it does on the Jewish calendar. The feasts are going to be celebrated really close to the right time every year. But I just don't know how much work people have done on trying to harmonize using the actual biblical standards for the Jewish feasts and to harmonize that with the Gregorian calendar because typically they've stuck with their Jewish calendar or an Essene calendar. Now, there's one interesting thing I want to bring up here in, in the concluding remark on this stuff, and that's that there's going to be a glorious resolution, in my estimation, to uh, the calendar problems that we have. As a young man, before I'd heard of born-again Christianity, before I knew that you had to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, one of the insights that I had, and it's not ever left me, is just thinking about the Creator God. And I thought, you know what? I think the 365 and a quarter day year has to be a problem. It has to be part of the, the curse on mankind, it has to be part of a broken universe. Because if God made a, a year, He would have made a year that had 360 days in it, which is where early man probably got the 360 degrees in a circle, the circle of the year. And I was, my mind went down that path. And it was pretty amazing later on when I'd been a born-again Christian for probably a couple decades and came across books that pointed out that the original calendar around the world was a 360-day calendar. And then I realized that my intuition on our calendar being a broken part of a broken solar system in a broken world because of the curse was, was true. Now, I think this problem is going to be fixed before we go into the kingdom. I think starting with the time of the rapture of the church and going through the time of tribulation uh, and, and the day of the Lord, the dawning of the day of the Lord, then the full arrival of the day of the Lord in that time period, the Lord is going to adjust things and move things in the solar system. Things are going to get bumped. They're going to get nudged. 
Some are going to get sped up, some are going to get slowed down, some are going to move closer, some are going to get moved farther away from things. And when he's all said and done, he's got everything in the solar system rearranged. When we come to the first day of the kingdom, we're going to be back on a 360 day year calendar. We see this 360 day year already in the book of Revelation. And whether that means that this 360 day year is already introduced uh, before the 70th week starts, or whether it simply means that this is God's provision to get the current calendar system lined up with his calendar system. I don't really know, but I do know we come to the kingdom. We're going to be on his calendar. The lunar year and the solar year are going to be in perfect harmony. Now, I'm really looking forward to this. It's, it's going to be a, an amazing benefit to mankind that the lunar year and the solar year are in perfect harmony. Well, I, I trust that this has been a help to you in helping you to understand the background to the calendar and understand that we've got this massive problem that none of the current calendars can be legitimately called the, the actual original calendar. They're all um, efforts by fallen, broken man to fix the broken calendar um, and they, they do the best that they can. They have various things they're trying to accomplish. Some of them accomplish it very well. Some of them don't accomplish it very well. But they're all trying to address a chaotic system that doesn't allow of an ideal solution. And when we get to the kingdom, we're going to have our ideal solution because the king, the creator, the redeemer is going to bring the restitution of all things. And one of the things that's going to be restituted and, and restored is going to be the calendar year, the length of the year, the length of the solar year, the length of the lunar year, the length of the lunar month. Everything is going to be back in perfect harmony. So I trust, again, that this has given you some good insight into the situation and that you can see that there's no easy fixes to the calendar problem, that there is no calendar that is the ideal calendar above all others, though I would say that for general purposes, the solar calendar that we use as the Gregorian calendar is the most accurate, but it's not the most accurate for everything. It's just the most accurate in general. I also point out that only God can fix the calendar problem, and God will fix the calendar problem. No calendar is ideal. Every calendar has its weaknesses. And in general, the simpler the calendar, the better. So eyes wide open, brain engaged, heart on fire. We'll see you next time.